All right. So uh, there is no unit eight exam. And um, we really cannot be sure that I've organized my units the same way as the college board. So whether or not they said that air pollution would be or not be in that um, exam, maybe some of this content would be on the AP test. So um, this content might also be on the final. So even though I've canceled unit eight, I wanna do something like the stars. Um, uh, go get your study guide, pause, and then come back. You'll need this thing. And on that study guide, I want to point out some stuff. Um, I'm going to go in the order of the study guide um, and just sort of identify um, some content where you should probably just check your notes. And then uh, after you've checked your notes, you can ask me questions this Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I'm going to go in the order of the study guide, starting at the top. Um, remember that we added albedo. Uh, you should know information about six different criteria pollutants. Uh, make sure that you understand secondary air pollution, which is when the ingredients we put up there interact to make new things. Um, <clears throat> remember that there's two types of smog. Uh, make sure that you found the scrubber, wet scrubbing. Um, in our list of uh, solutions to air pollution. Um, <clears throat> study goal number four, that analogy about uh, windows up and down in a parked car to talk about the atmosphere and warming. Uh, remember that number eight um, has been reversed at times. Um, we used to think that um, high clouds would trap heat and that low clouds would reflect more radiation, but it turns out that it's the opposite. Um, high clouds have albedo because they're frostier. Um, low clouds um, are wet. They're more water molecules, and so they vibrate more, and so low clouds uh, trap more heat. Um, Let's see here. Number 13, make sure you got that. The College Board asks those questions all the time. Um, like which element is more common? What's the Earth's crust made of? What's the center of the Earth made of? Um, they always ask about those. It's just a list that you copied straight out of your textbook. Um, uh, that diagram that we made in number 14, there was like six rules that I told you to write down. If you don't have those, text somebody and make sure that you got all six of them. Um, Milankovitch cycles are important. There was three of them. You can Google it to find them as well. Um, uh, you should definitely know all the greenhouse gases in study goal number 19. Um, also the sources of greenhouse gases from humans. So those, those greenhouse gases that we add, um, what human activity adds them. Uh, I've seen that on the AP test quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> um, let me see. Um, so study goal number 24 about the El Nino cycles, I, I'm struggling to figure out how to put that into internet content. Um, I could do that drawing on the whiteboard. It doesn't seem to transfer very well when I've tried to draw it on paper. Um, I think that the best way would be for me to find a link on the internet, but you'll have to remind me to make something available about El Nino. Um, they haven't asked a ton. The College Board has never asked very detailed explanations, and I've always taught about it pretty detailed because of where we live, um, how much our climate is impacted by um, by El Nino, so I always teach about it a lot. They don't ask about it a lot. Um, hey, check it out. My wife made really good bread. Yeah, my wife makes some unbelievable sourdough. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I don't know about El Nino. Uh, you'll have to remind me later that I haven't taught El Nino yet, and I'm going to try to find you a link that teaches it. Um,
article number 29 had a list of stuff that I think might be interesting. Um, the book had a bunch of stuff and then we added a bunch in class. Um, let's see. Um, don't forget synergistic effects. Uh, when things have a surprised combined effect when you have two separate problems. Um, number 31, you should have a clean list of all six criteria pollutants. Uh, remember, volatile organic compounds are not a criteria pollutant, but there are a variety of laws to control sources of VOCs. So they're not technically one of the VO, one of the criteria pollutants, but they're kind of a criteria pollutant. Um, the chemistry for acid rain shows up on like every AP test, so make sure that you have those three reactions. Um, Remember that uh, ozone down here is dangerous, so tropospheric ozone is a problem for us. Uh, ozone up there, stratospheric, works as sunblock. Um, it primarily blocks UVB, which would be very harmful for us if it reached us. So ozone is uh, something we want in the stratosphere, something we need to avoid in the troposphere. Uh, it's the exact same gas. If we could move our pollution up to the stratosphere, we'd be stoked, but... Um, Stratospheric is a problem, tropospheric, sorry, stratospheric is good, uh, tropospheric is a problem. Um, hopefully you just saw the first video that I posted uh, last night um, about uh, ultraviolet making and breaking ozone. Uh, if you didn't see that, uh, please go back and watch that one. Um, so number 36, I haven't talked about yet, and it's kind of come up in a few of my classes. Um, sorry, I have to decline this phone call. Um, so let's number 36. Um, before we regulated ozone depleting gases, um, the ozone layer was being destroyed. There's this thing called the hole in the ozone layer. So the ozone layer was being eaten up. Um, maybe you saw that thing where I had the Legos. Um, so uh, the entire planet had discovered this exciting new chemistry that we had unleashed into the atmosphere and that was starting to um, hollow out uh, the ozone layer. Um, Eventually, the Northern Hemisphere started to worry about this, and uh, the major economies of the world signed this big pact um, to prevent ozone-depleting gases from being emitted. Um, when you use up those gases, they eventually, uh, like the chlorines would find another chlorine and become inactive, or the bromine would find another bromine and become inactive. And so... Uh, Ozone depleting substances were heavily regulated at the international level. And over a period of about 10 or 15 years, um, those atoms that were eating up the atmosphere started to find a couple and started to um, uh, dissipate. Um, ozone started to recover by the 1990s. Um, by the year 2000, it looked like the ozone layer was on its way to recovering. Um, you might remember from my other lecture that um, ozone is formed spontaneously. As long as there's oxygen in the air, ultraviolet makes a few singles that will clump onto O2s to make O3s. So um, ozone started to recover um, as we were emitting less ozone depleting gases. It looked like we had solved a problem at the international level that affected um, our shared atmosphere. Um, there were um, about 15 years of hope and excitement and high fives. And then some of the smaller economies which had not been invited to that um, meeting uh, back in the 80s when we decided to stop making the gases, there were some economies that just weren't there, you know, who the hell's going to invite um, Burma or whatever. And uh, as it happened, some of those little tiny countries that we didn't think um, had much economic uh, relevance, um, they've kind of revved up their economies and they're like, yo, let's start making spray paint. And when they make spray paint, they're like, I don't know, I guess we could use this. And so ozone depleting substances have become more common. And most recently, 
the hole in the ozone layer has stopped healing and has actually started to grow again. We are in 2020 experiencing ozone depletion like we were in the early 18, 1980s. Um, it took about 30 odd years for all of the ignored countries to become big enough to pose a problem. Um, and international action is not very doable anymore. Um, countries that used to believe in cooperation now don't. Um, and so it's interesting to consider that um, um, the ozone hole is a problem that we had solved. It shouldn't be a problem anymore. And it looks like it will be a problem again in the near future. Kind of a bummer. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> please don't forget number 37. Look at it. Don't forget it. <clears throat> uh, 38, I think we talked about in class. Um, Uh, we've talked about atmospheric inversions, um, indoor air pollution. I'd like you to use a couple sections of your book. It's way better than me lecturing. Uh, we've talked about rad, um, uh, radon. Um, we'll talk about the articles later. Um, yeah. So that's sort of like stars, just the part of your notes that I'd like you to look through and highlight one last time um, before we move on to unit nine. Uh, I'll see you Wednesday or Thursday um, for a quick check-in to answer your questions about this content. And then maybe I'll see you next week or something. Bye-bye.